I want to ask you a question. What do you think is the psychological impact of having a child on its mother? You may be thinking, that's a simple question. Sure, the mother may experience some postpartum depression, but ultimately, women find having a child to be a blessing. And although this is most often the case, there are still many exceptions that must be considered. In the novel Secret Daughter, Somer is a Caucasian American woman. She had a miscarriage and, for this reason, adopted an Indian girl. She feels her identity as a woman is at stake due to her infertility and feels like this adoptive relationship just isn't cutting it. Kavita is an Indian woman. She's stuck in an arranged marriage and, because of society's expectations, must dispose of her two daughters and try a third time for a boy. Every day, she prays they're safe and wonders where they are. As can already be seen, there are many potential complications when making the decision to have a child. Some due to biological reasons and others due to social reasons. Some happen during birth, while others only begin to occur on later in life. In this episode of Paperback Podcast, we will be discussing pride versus pain, the psychological significance of a child in a woman's life within the context of secret daughter. We will discuss the highs and lows these parallel protagonists, Somer and Kavita, have undergone in their journey through motherhood and analyze their fluctuating mental state. This podcast will be structured by first stating an initial topic, for example, death. We'll then explain how death has caused a negative impact on the mental state of Somer and Kavita, such as grief, and explain the positive impact, such as greater resilience. By the end of this podcast, we will come to answer the question, does having a child cause a mother more pride than pain? And ultimately, should she take this risk? March of Dimes is a nonprofit organization that works to improve the health of mothers and their babies. One of their articles goes into detail about the grief to expect after losing your child at birth and how to handle these emotions. And so the first topic in this podcast, as brought up in the example previously, is death. The negative psychological impact of death of a child is grief. The article states, when your baby dies from miscarriage, stillbirth, or afterbirth, your hope of being a parent dies too. The dreams you had of holding your baby and watching him grow are gone. So much of what you wanted and planned for are lost. This can leave a large, empty space inside you. It can take a long time to heal the space. This idea strongly relates to Somer because after experiencing a miscarriage, she fell into a depression. This can be illustrated on page 54, reading, Today was to be her due date. It was to be the day of celebration for her and Krishnan, but instead she will mourn alone. The expressions of concern from other people trickled off a few weeks after her miscarriage. The only proof of the baby she lost is the home pregnancy test which she now holds in her hand and the persistent hollow she has not been able to fill. Although Kavita's daughters didn't necessarily die due to miscarriage, she nonetheless experiences a similar feeling of grief. In her situation, she has to dispose of her daughters in the trash and at an orphanage as it's a disgrace to her community to have a girl. This is the equivalent of death and grief is illustrated when she finally conceived Vijay. Kavita wipes away her own tears. These rituals she shares with Jasu and their baby are beautiful and touching, but the joy cannot transcend her grief. For years, she has longed for this moment, but now that it has come, it is laced with sorrow from the past. Now, enough about pain. Although death is inherently bad, there is nonetheless good that sprouts from dealing with its grief. Stronger resilience, for example, as seen with the quote, When she becomes pregnant again, Kavita does not let herself think about this baby in the same way she has before. She does not dwell on her tender breasts or touch her growing belly. She doesn't even share the news with Jesu right away. When the thoughts of life growing inside her come to mind, she simply pushes them away, like the dust she sweeps from the floor each day. It is a practice she has mastered in the many months after Bombay. 
This feeling also gave her courage, so much so that the second time she conceived a girl, instead of having it ripped from her arms by Jasu, she fought back. Quote, she knew her defiance in escaping his grasp, even temporarily, had shown Jasu the depth of her strength. And this, in turn, led to respect. In the months afterward, though he behaved awkwardly, he had allowed her the time and space she needed. It was the first genuine show of respect he had made toward her in their four years of marriage. As can be seen, there are various circumstances a mother may face that makes their child more vulnerable to death. And as a mother, one must determine whether this resilience and newfound courage will compensate enough for the tremendous grief in order to make the final decision. Mousy Lee is a vlogger and lifestyle YouTuber. She has two children, one biological and the other adopted, and while I was browsing through videos, one of hers particularly stood out to me, titled Bonding with Adopted Child vs. Biological Child. In this video, she discusses whether, from her experience, the love she has for them differs. Bonding is the second topic I'd like to discuss in this podcast. The pain that comes from bonding is guilt. Specifically, Somer adopts Asha, an Indian girl, to compensate for her infertility. However, she soon begins to contemplate whether it's the amount of effort she's putting into it or maybe it's their difference in skin color that can be attributed to why her first couple days as a new mother have been highly stressful. The novel says, Somer wonders if it's the biological connection that underpins their confidence, or is the time they spend together, the time Somer spends at work? Would she know better what to do with Asha if they shared the same blood? Would Asha respond better to Somer if she didn't look so different from everyone she'd known in her life? In Lee's discussion, a similar topic is brought up. She states that some parents, like herself, who have an adoptive and biological child, may favor the latter due to our human nature. You created that child versus you've taken on the responsibility of that child. She then says that when this happens to parents, many of them feel guilt and shame, like they did something wrong and need to correct themselves and do better. Although Somer doesn't have two children, she is nonetheless exemplary of this guilt. Since she has no experience in motherhood but still wishes to be the best mother for her child, she feels immense guilt when she's unable to put the baby to sleep or have love reciprocated back to her. Quote, I can't do it. I don't know how to do this. She was up all night screaming. Somer has always believed that not everyone is cut out for motherhood. Nature already deemed she couldn't be a mother, and now she wonders if she's made a mistake. The rational explanations she strains to hear in her head cannot drown out the doubt welling in her heart. Lee, however, states how she feels no guilt because the love she puts into either of her children is identical. She says that many parents can fix this problem by simply giving more genuine affection. Quote, You can't help whether the bond came naturally or not, but don't beat yourself up over that. If you give that child the same amount of love that you would give a biological child, they are just as much your child. No one can change that. Hence, the positive takeaway from guilt one experiences when unable to bond with their child is learning to love. And Somer ultimately learns this. She learns that by simply being there when it cries, putting it to sleep, and being its mother, will the relationship she wished she had from the start flourish. In short, although being biologically related to a child serves as the foundation to their relationship, what ultimately matters is the time they put into that relationship. So as long as one has the right mindset and attitude, they can hone it with their adoptive child just as well as if it were their actual child. Therefore, a mother must consider the possibility of a poor initial bond with her child before making the final decision. This is because it can lead to the feeling of immense guilt. However, if able to overcome this feeling, she will learn a valuable lesson in what it means to love a child. Now, I would like to answer the question, 
psychologically speaking, does having a child cause a woman more good than bad? No, I believe having a child causes a woman more pain than pride. Because as can be seen with the overwhelming grief, guilt, and overall burden it can cause to one's state of mind, making this decision can be devastating. However, I would also like to answer the question, should she take this risk? Yes, I believe this risk is ultimately worth it. I don't believe the possible effects should deter one from taking this risk because as long as you prepare for it and have the right mindset going into it, without a doubt can you turn your weaknesses into your strengths. This was Ben Sandoval for Paperback Podcast and thank you for listening.